Watford. Mm. I don't know if he's good enough for PSG in all honesty. Mm. I genuinely expected him on like the third wing on Hot One to just be like, oh, I want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> he's really left himself in a sticky situation. Yeah. Welcome back to Monday Vibes, every Bozzy, the show where we catch up on all the goings on. Uh, from the weekend, um, joining me today, it's a bit of a you know um, alternative cast. I'm, yes. I'm in the hot seat for once. Um, alternative. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm playing Joe Tomlinson, and uh, to my right, Henry Hill and Sam Abbasi. I'm Zach today. Uh, you Zach, so yeah. you must be. I'm Doogie. Henry. I'm Henry. No, <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not. I'm not accepting this substitute role. Or Doogie we, are who we, we are who we are. Irrelevant. <laughs> we are our own people. They're away. Very much. We're in up. charge this week. Get Come used on. to it. So yeah, on. I know. I think yeah, uh, very, very true, Henry. Very true. Yeah, get used to it because uh, yeah, Zach's gone off to America with Chelsea. Weeks, Joe's, him up. Joe's, I don't, yeah, I don't know where Joe is uh, on some island in, um, in the Mediterranean. Pools. And um, Doogie is, I'm not sure where Doogie is, but he's, you know, he's, he's having a well end break off. as well. He's yeah. taking some time off. Um, so yes, but we've got a bumper show lined up for you guys today. Uh, lots going on in the transfer market. Lots of drama. Um, how are you boys? First of all, uh, have a nice weekend. And are you watching the the Wimbledon? You were both watching the Wimbledon final yesterday. I mean, unbelievable! <laughs> I love it. If this could be a tennis daily episode, I'd be absolutely buzzing. You for know, it, you really. know, he was literally watching the highlights before. <laughs> before yeah. he, he watched the full match, but he was watching it again. Like, it was yeah, really that, good, though. That's it not crazy. Like everyone watches football highlights after. No, you're right. You're game, right. Yeah. It was quality. Like, it the, was quality. It's like. How long did it go on for? Four and a half hours? Mm. Was it it's, almost the longest one ever? It's crazy. Yeah. For him to do that, to beat like, the greatest ever, in so, and like some of the shots he was hitting, it was, it was pure drama. It was classic, pure wasn't drama. it? It felt, it felt like the golden age of tennis again. Who knows? Um, but uh, let, let's go get onto the football, because we've, we've rambled for long enough now, or at least I have. Um, Romelu Lukaku kicking things off. Ooh, this ooh. weekend, more drama with Romelu Lukaku. Um, Big Returning to Chelsea on Tuesday, reportedly 24 hours after Pochettino's squad have flown to the United States for the preseason tour. Um, Juventus now leading the race uh, for his signature. Um, Inter Milan have pulled out, very annoyed, understandably, that he was talking to Juventus in the build up to the Champions League final. Yeah. Um, First of all, as well, there's reports been going around that Rock Nation were considering cutting ties with him. They have denied this. They've called that fake news. So let's get that out there. Um, would they make it? Would they say it's not fake news? Though, even if yeah. they were. Yeah, they were. I mean, I guess so. But it, but it, it sounds like they're they're very much involved in the negotiations mm. of, of where he goes next. Um, so I'm not sure where those initial reports came from, but they have been, um, yeah, pretty uh, strong in, in 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 refuting those claims. Um, so those are the facts on the table. Um, Inter also apparently interested in following Balogun, which is an interesting development. Um, but I'll come to you first, Oba, because you've had a complicated relationship um, with this player <laughs> yeah, since his return to Chelsea in 2021. Um, yeah, what, what's your take on this? I think it's, it's an interesting one because obviously when he first came back to Chelsea, it was like everyone was saying that's going to be a big move. That's going to put them back into the title race. We saw how that happened. It didn't work out a few months into it. Did that infamous interview saying that he wanted to go back to Inter Milan. Got his move back to Inter Milan the year after. Um, he had like an up and down period since being, being back. I don't mm. think he ever really like solidified his spot as the starting striker when he came back. And I think that that might be part of the reason why he was having those combos with Juventus. I saw reports about him um, not being too happy about not starting the Champions League final and that's when you know the interest from Juve actually like turned his head you know Love Island mm. terms um, <laughs> so I, I can almost yeah. understand why he was keeping all of his um, options, open. options open but at the same time it's, a, it's the transparency and like how you go about it we all know what he said Inter meant to him um, he, he almost bashed Chelsea to a certain extent saying that he wants to go back wants to go back there so everyone it looked like Inter were doing their everything possible to make sure that they can sign him you know they were going in they I think they had two or three bids rejected then yeah. they, they finally um, agreed on a fee and then they hear that he's having conversations with a bit of rival in the same league it's like I can understand them being frustrated so now it just looks like he is the ultimate problem because he had issues when he was at Manchester United before he left Chelsea now now Inter so it's just yeah. like bro like what's going on communicate yeah. with your, your team your manager I heard that he wasn't he wasn't speaking to the managers and the players when they were trying to ring him when they had agreed a deal don't know if that was fully true but now that they've come out of the deal it kind of makes it seem like there was like a misinterpretation of something yeah it does seem like he's not been the best at communicating with 
um, you know, with his employers in general. It's interesting because I thought I, when he left Man United, I thought kind of all power to him. You know, mm. he was he, he played a I think I think he played a pretty strong hand um, to, to get that move to Inter initially. Um, but yeah, it does seem strange. And you were saying as well, like in, in that interview where, you know, that the interview that kind of everything, you know, that caused everything to fall apart at Chelsea, he also said that he would never join Juve or Milan. He was and so he's sure. he's gone back on that now as well. Yeah, he was so sure about it. And it's, it's, it's really weird. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. And I can, like I said, I can understand him being doubtful of going back to Inter if they're not fully sure of him being their starting striker. Mm. Obviously, Juve want to sell Vlahovic because of the money and he would definitely be a yeah. starter over there. But at the same time, you said that you're loyal to this team and maybe Inter feel hoodwinked because yeah. that he's spoke so highly of them in recent years. And, and also, I mean, he was, you know, he was getting into the team towards the end of the season. He, mm. he, he, had, he was in pretty good form, actually, towards the end of the campaign. Henry, though, like Sam was saying... Juve would need to sell Dusan Vlahovic yeah. to get a deal for Lukaku in. Dusan Vlahovic himself not you know not had a, a sparkling season. Mm. But do you think do you think this is worth it for Juve? I do. I, I think he's let's be, have it right. Lukaku is a great striker when he's on song, isn't yeah. he? And he, he's obviously got pedigree in Serie A as well. And I think I would say he's an upgrade on Vlahovic. He's an upgrade on Vlahovic personally. I know he's older than Vlahovic. Yeah, a lot older. Is. But he's in a, he is in a difficult situation where they need to sell him. They need mm. someone to come in for for the Serbian. And I know that Saudi Arabia is a very you know, it's on the table now as a place that uh, they could make transfers happen. I'm not so sure we've seen one at the, the levels of what Vlahovic would cost in terms of a straight transfer fee. What sixty million? Mm. That's probably what they'd be looking for at this point in time. I don't see where else he goes other than maybe Chelsea. So PSG yeah. maybe. Yeah. I've seen I've seen a few rumours. Mm, I don't know if he's good enough for PSG in all honesty. Mm. But yeah, it's definitely definitely a, a potential option there but yeah so they need Juventus need to get the money they want for Vlavic before they can execute any deal on Lukaku and I think as you said like, yeah, the, he doesn't look like he's got a future back at Chelsea at all so he's in a really difficult situation and I do feel sorry for, in, for Inter Milan because they are they have been in a difficult financial situation themselves and if they were working as hard as possible to go in for him and they don't they don't need to 30 years old as you said the alternative is Balogun 22 years old He's going to cost them a bit more, but it shows the loyalty they were willing to put in him and say, yeah. look, we will bring you back. Obviously, jeko has gone. Turam's come in, but Turam can play on the left as well. It's not as if he has to play centre forwards. They, they, Inzaghi was saying, we will give you the chance to come and feel loved in a club that you know you've at least made a home. And it's not his. Lukaku has no right to start the Champions League final. Jeko mm. was in better form than him yeah. going into that and had a better partnership at that moment in time with Lautaro Martinez. So I cannot believe. And yeah, listen, he's got to keep his options open. It's fair enough for him talking to other clubs. I cannot believe that he's managed to annoy Inter in such a way that they've backed out of this deal yeah. altogether. Like, he's really left himself in a sticky situation. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, sticking on the subject of attackers and Chelsea, Callum hudson Adoy, Henry. Um, this, is, this, is a good, this is a good little Chelsea-Fulham collab right here. Um, yes. And, uh, yeah. Turned down a bid from Fulham for Callum hudson Adoy. Um, one year left on his deal, of course, at Stamford Bridge. Um, yeah, I mean, w would you would you be keen on a move like this, Henry? A, this is really hard to say. I mean, yes, we need a winger. It looks like Willian is going to re-sign for another yep. year, which is no, great. But he's not, a lo he's not a long-term solution, is he, no. really? And I think he's asked for a lot of money, uh, if what I've read is correct, um, to stay at Fulham. But yeah, hudson Adoy, we've lost Mana Solomon as well now at Spurs um, I like him it's just it's hard because I think we were talking before this Sam you were saying last year was the year he finally got that low move away mm. and we were all excited to see what he could do and at Bayer Leverkusen essentially he flopped 14 games in the Bundesliga 7 starts just over 600 minutes 1 assist apparently Xabi Alonso really didn't fancy him and bear in mind he was taking over a team that was struggling a lot so mm. there would have been an opportunity for yeah. Hudson-Odoi to say, look, this is what I can do. A lot of and moving parts in that forward line, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, and the fact that Bayer Leverkusen have written him off makes me worried a little bit. I mean, it would probably be easier for him to come to Ch uh, Fulham, wouldn't it? Just literally, what, stone's throw from Stamford Bridge. I would like to get this over the line, but I don't want to overpay for him because at this point in his career, I think he's only once got over a 1,000 minutes in the league for Chelsea in his time there. Was it 32 starts? And I know still he's only young. young though, yeah. He's still very young, but he's played a lot. Of, he's been on the scene for a while now, and he's you know he's nowhere near England talk or contention anymore. And really, that kind of star boy that we saw burst through 
for that Chelsea youth side and the youth cup and then go on to do great things in the Europa League run mm. under Sally. Mm. And now it's just, and now it, it, it's at a real stalemate. And you look at the other options available to him, apparently Nottingham Forest, uh, potentially interested as well. Lazio, I was reading. It's mm. not great, is it, for him? I mean, Lazio would be quite cool, Champions League club. But at the same time, he, he, you know, he maybe needs to accept that he's not going, that he, this is the, the step back that he needs to take in his career in order to reignite something. But yeah, I, I would be happy for this for Fulham, but I wouldn't overpay because really we haven't seen him do it week in and week out in the Premier mm. League yet. And that makes me nervous because I think Fulham are in for a very difficult season. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't had consistent game time. Like you say, yeah, Fulham like could get dragged into a relegation battle if, if the transfer window doesn't go doesn't go right. Sam, do you think um, will you be sad to see Hudson Odoi leave if he goes this summer? Like it feels it feels like he just never really capitalised on his opportunities in the end, or at least the opportunities didn't. Where do you think it went wrong for him, at Chelsea? I basically, think, I think it's really tough because. At the time where he was really kicking on, and, and you you see that kind of storyline with a few of the Chelsea players that you've seen leave recently with like Loftus Cheek, um, Pulisic not as much, but you could say that injuries did didn't help his you no know, progression at Chelsea. But because he was playing in such a populated area, as yeah. soon as he got injured, it was really hard for him to come back to, into the team. On top of the fact that you know there was other forwards that would offer something a little bit different, that like you saw with the stats from Leverkusen, he's never really been a player that you'd expect to get 10 goals and assists. But in terms of what he offers overall, I think he had a really good partnership with Lukaku when um, he was playing um, with him under Tuchel, and then he got injured, and it's like mm. it's always two steps forward, one step back and then you saw the, the interest from Bayern and then he signed his new contract and then he got the wage and then there's almost a pressure of you to perform to that level mm. even though you're still really young and you're not necessarily going to be a guaranteed starter. Do, do you think that's poor planning from Chelsea though? I know it's the previous ownership that all that all happened under but you know you, you hand a bumper new contract to a wonder kid winger yeah. And then you go and invest tons of money and uh, and a ton of other other wingers, and like you know, it's only really now that there seems to be a bit of space opening up in those areas in yeah. that Chelsea squad. I think I think it was more a fear of making that mistake again, where you have quality players. You're seeing it with Colwell now as well. Like yeah. you you've seen multiple players that have come through Chelsea and they've they should have kicked on at Chelsea and let's say Chelsea sold them or they, they went on loan and they stayed on loan and it's like, oh, look at what they've become, look at what we missed out on. And I think they didn't want Hudson Odoi to be that player. So mm. it was almost, it's, it's unfortunate because now I think he, he might be a bit wary of making that step back. And I think Fulham would be a great, a great team for him to go to in terms of where they finished last season. They want to kick on and you know start challenging for those like European spots or similar position that they were in. He's not confident. He's not confident. <laughs> but, well. I mean, but that's what I'm saying. If you get a player like Hudson Odoi, you get a few a few other youngsters in in different positions. I think Fulham will be in in good stead. But at the same time, I think because of that the interest that he had with Bayern and then the interest that he's had in previous years, he might be thinking will I be able to make that step back up? And I think a lot of these youngsters feel that, but mm. I do think he will be able to yeah. kick on and be that player. He's still very Hopefully. young. Man. I mean, Marco Silva would be a great manager for him, but then mm. reports the weekends that he's stalling on signing a new deal. He's got one year left on his really? contract at Fulham because, because he haven't That's had the support in the market that he's wanted. We yeah. haven't made a single S- signing. Similar, similar situation last year, wasn't yeah. it? He was, he, was pretty, uh, he was pretty down on their efforts. I think he accepts that this is going to be a difficult time. We've got, we've got Al Halal going in strong for Mitrovic, who's made it very clear that he wants to leave the club. Mm. So we're potentially going into next season either without Mitrovic or with a disgruntled forward who doesn't even want to be there, which which is not a good look, is it, really? I mean, yeah. he feels like six years he's done his service to Fulham and he wants to go cash in, join Milinkovic Savic out in Saudi Arabia. I don't necessarily blame him, to be fair. And if we've got a manager as well who's got one eye, because he, he rejected a big offer from Saudi Arabia, he's now got one eye potentially out the door because if he can see this Fulham project maybe not kicking on, who have we been linked with? Fred so far, Hudson yeah. Adoy. It's it's not the kind of signings you're saying this but is. Those, those I, I think, I think, I think Fred would be a right very solid, yeah, a very solid midfield signing. We, we need more. Like we need more. We need yeah. to see more action. Anthony Robertson signing a new de- Robinson, sorry, signing a new deal is the only positive so far this summer. And if we lose Mitrovic, if Marcus Silva's disgruntled, and we don't get the signing like this through the door, I'm really, really concerned for Fulham. Yeah. So yeah, maybe that would be a, a word of caution for. Hudson Adoy, if it is looking at joining the, pro- the project. Right, right now, on the t- uh, I'm putting this on the table. 17th place next year. Do you take it? Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. All <laughs> well, right, we got it. it. One last thing we on Callum. I think he, it, obviously, he probably won't watch this, but I just think he needs to back himself. Yeah. Make that move to, to Fulham. Like, just work, work your way up, and and like almost. 
there's, there's obviously going to be that pressure, but it's not going to be the same as when you're playing at Chelsea. And you don't want to be in that type of rotation and be forgotten about. Mm. Like back yourself, go to a Fulham or Nottingham Forest and then see what happens, man. Yeah, I think I think the, the, the key is being being somewhere where you are guaranteed yeah. first team every yeah. single week. And hopefully, you know, his fitness doesn't let him down. Um, speaking of, well, but going kind of back to Mitrovic, I, I, actually, I'm just I'm just trying to force a transition here. Another striker <laughs> who wants to leave the Premier League, uh, Harold so Kane, Mr. Harold Kane. Harold Kane, uh, spicy big, one. Big, big, big week for him. Very spicy. Go and check out the hot ones if you haven't already. Um, yeah, we were saying it was it wasn't it wasn't the most engaging interview. Oh, I liked but it. I it, liked was, it. It, was, it was it was interesting. Like it was you know nice what? to see him in that like yeah. laid back. He was wearing jeans, like a white tee, like <laughs> yeah. just eating wings. Fair yeah. enough, man. And he was like, you know what? He does. He comes across like a lovely guy. Yeah, as yeah, a lovely guy. Sure. I liked it, how was, it was very wholesome. He was asked about football chants and he said his favourite is he's one of our own. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, that is not the most creative chance ever. But, but fair yeah, enough, yeah. That, that, yeah. he probably loves it, yeah. isn't it? And then wasn't like, did someone oh yeah, <laughs> I know it's actually Sonny I think was saying, Oh, is that is that a sign that he's that he staying or stay. whatever? They're like, clutching yeah. onto anything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I wonder what Sonny's gotta say you know, today about uh, Harry Kane. He's gonna be yeah, got content for weeks <laughs> um, out of this situation. Um, but anyway, I mean there has been a development in terms of Barn putting on the pressure, Uli Honus coming out mm. saying that Spurs will have to buckle <laughs> um, in these negotiations because, well, as he says, Kane has made his mind up supposedly. Like, we know that Kane has, you know, there's been widely reported that Kane is keen to go to Bayern Munich. Yeah. You know, his head has been turned back to Spurs before, as we all know, especially in that <laughs> summer of 2021. Yeah. Um, yeah, Henry, what, what do you, what do you make of this situation? Like, it feels like, you know, Daniel Levy is, obviously Stubborn. dragging thing, things along. Uli Hernes has said that he's not even um, given them a price. Yeah. Um, so like, you know, he, he's doing, you know, I think he, I think he has respect for him as well. Like he, he is a tough negotiator. Everyone knows he's a tough negotiator. Where do you see this going? Um, it's an interesting one because if he's saying Spurs have to buckle, I think Daniel Levy's opinion is no, I don't. I'm yeah. <laughs> pretty sure he's like, um, I don't. Yeah, I'm fine. So it's, it's interesting. It's quite a I guess strong. It's, I guess it, I guess it's using Kane's situation a bit, isn't it? It's, it's, it's he's trying to kind of stir the pot. A little maybe bit. maybe this is what they need because Kane, he's respectful at the same time, isn't yeah. he? He's not going to go. He's not going to do the work himself, is he? Yeah, like, he's, he's, not, he's far all too, guns uh, blazing to yeah. get himself out of there. So maybe Uli Hones just applying a bit of pow power from a Bayern Munich perspective. I do kind of rate it. I think if he really wants to go, yeah, it's it's on Harry Kane now to really force this through. Mm. I think Bayern are doing as much as they can, but yeah, I mean. Still, the number that they're going to be quoted is still a number they're going to be reluctant to pay, especially if PSG are fishing around reportedly more interested in hitting that number. So, yeah, it's still going to be a monstrous transfer, whatever happens. I think it's worth it, personally. But, yeah, yeah I, I really like this from Bayern Munich. I think it's quite sneaky, and it's we don't often see this between two like big clubs, sort mm. of this, uh, this ver verbal manipulation, as it were. Yeah, absolutely, and, it, and it's interesting because he is like really the he's, he's the only top 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 striker on the market this summer isn't he He'd, what, 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 what sorry, go on. I, was, I was just gonna say i think he needs to really really push for this move like yeah. i genuinely expected him on like the third wing on hot one to just be like oh, i want to leave <laughs> <laughs> and then start, you and start coughing it out or something but it's just like you know you you want to kick on and win trophies yeah, yeah? Daniel Levy is a tough negotiator. He's he if you if you give him the indication that you're calm with your situation, which we've seen in recent reports yeah. saying that he doesn't mind playing out until the rest of the rest of his uh, the rest of his contract. It's like no, like back yourself. You scored yeah. 30 goals in the Premier League, yeah. You go to any other league in the world, you will do the exact same and win trophies. And on top of that, with the recent players that we've seen in his years where they've got Ronaldo and Messi, for example, gone on to play for 30 to 36, 37, you can come back to the Premier and still get that Shearer record. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, mm. if that's the biggest thing that you're thinking about, I don't think it's as big for you to not make a move abroad and go to a team where you 100% win trophies. I will say though, if Bayern are paying X amount of money for him, essentially going to want the rest of his career aren't they yeah because you know, they're not going to just let him be there for a few years and go back because otherwise that's a ridiculous investment but you're, you're yeah. so right i thought when he was eating the bomb he would, <laughs> he would, he would drop the bomb and, like, uh, just say. and also i loved it at the end they were like what have you got going on and i was really excited to see what he was going to say like so they were like what are you up to this this year harry you know i wanted to what if he was going to say about our future he said something about his foundation which was cool but i was yeah. like is this the moment because you can't say well you can watch me in the premier league <laughs> yeah <laughs> so Dan excited to see I mean, it's just, it's just that it would be, it would have been the most un-Harry Kane thing yeah, ever yeah, to yeah. drop a bomb like that. For sure. Um, 
so yeah, yeah we, we can all dream can't we okay moving on Andre Anana my boy Andre Anana hopefully hopefully soon um, uh, stay tuned for Team Talk this week I do preview my Andre Anana song <laughs> um, so if it falls apart now I'm it's a good very very well. silly very 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 silly in fact I noticed Stretford Paddock did an entire 50 minute live stream wow. um, talking about um, yeah Anana songs and uh, what's going to happen because uh, I think I can't remember was, I, someone else tweeted that there's like a generational thing so you know depending on what era you grew up in um, it's either Rihanna I think Camila Cabello <laughs> (laughs) well i'm not familiar with her music really um you know all you gen zers out there let me know which (laughs) which camilla cabello song um uh, uh, you want to sing for an honor anyway sorry let's get into the football here um i'm complete you know i'm I'm completely it's a good signing it should happen it's a good signing 50 million million pounds getting through the door they want him before their tour to the usa kicking off this week i think him and mount as a first two pieces of business this transfer window i think that's pretty excellent i mean that's awesome yeah, most clean sheets in the Champions League last season. Really quality keeper. He's going to transform the way they play Chance. out from the back. Knows Ten Hag, knows the system. I think United fans should be very, very excited about this. I mean, Guardiola like, was raving about him ahead of the Champions League. He, he's that yeah. good of a player. Mm. I think I think uh, moving on to hair, getting him in, being a bit ruthless like that, I kind of respect it from, yeah. from them. And I, I really like Eric, the way Eric Ten Hag's gone about like treating the players that have been at United for a few years. Like, I think when he came in, he gave everyone an opportunity, like a clean slate. Like this, from from when I'm a manager, you've got this opportunity to prove yourself. And I don't think, I saw a report about, I think it was the last few games of De Gea when he was having a howler mm. against Sevilla, against um, City, where it was like, okay, we can't move forward with you anymore. I mm. think he actually was all right with him seeing out the rest of his contract or even sign a new contract if he was going to lower his wages. Yeah, I mean, he was but backing him even after the severe game to, exactly, to sign a new contract exactly. instead of the club. But I think now... Publicly, at least. Because, because of that, I think he's almost he's almost realised how important it is for him to have a, a ball-playing goalkeeper. And with Onana at that price, because I think what has happened recently is we're, we're seeing you know keepers being priced as if they're outfield players. And I think rightly so. If yeah. you're if you're if you're a goalkeeper that you can play out the back and really start attacks, you can almost dictate the tempo of a game like we've seen Onana do, there's no reason for him not to be a fifty mil. I think that for that price, remember we talk about when Doogie was saying that yeah, it's a great value. For crazy it's argument. Great value. It's, it's, it's crazy great argument from value. Doogie. Like genuinely I think he's gonna be one of those signings where you say getting it for fifty mil was not a still but great. Great Potentially value. a transformative signing, isn't yeah. it? I think the Allison move to Liverpool all those years ago kind of set, you know, set an example of of, of how big money on a goalkeeper can really transform a side. Mm. Um, and and yeah, I think Doogie raised the point. You know, United could have gambled last year and got him in on a free for sure, but he was coming off that ban. I think in terms of like a player bouncing back from adversity and going right back to the top of their game, I that. think on An- Anana is, you know, one of the best examples out there. What an amazing season at Inter, and I think also that Champions League final performance, you know, uh, like that that did not do um, so good. any disservice to Inter's um, kind of. Uh, valuation of him no, like, you know, he, he, he really put himself back in the shop window as one of the best keepers in the world especially one of the best ball playing keepers in the world mm. um, and yeah I'm in agreement I know I'm a United fan but yeah very happy uh, no, with with this piece of business just another sorry go on just Sam said that Ten Hag's treated the United players well um, the former ones well how do you feel he's treated Mr. Maguire this, uh, <laughs> this weekend. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, they've, they've well, you know, they've clearly had a conversation, and Maguire is no longer the club captain at Man United. Yeah, it feels like it was probably inevitable, wasn't it? I mean, when you look back to the start of last season in those opening weeks, um, when you know no one really covered themselves in glory, but Maguire particularly struggled, and then he, you know, by the end of the season, Luke Shaw was ahead of in the, in the pecking order at, at centre back. Yeah, um, it feels like a kind of natural progression, really. Um, you know nothing massively concrete coming in for him in terms of an offer right now in the transfer market but it feels like you know United probably will accept probably Something, like thir- yeah. 30 million maybe 30 to 40 million um, 40 for, million I don't know 40, 40 million is probably too much actually I think thir- I think 20 to 30 uh, probably more realistic you're right um, his, sta- his, statement, his statement made it sound like he was so he's very busy disappointed no, but he's trying to stay though you can tell that there's a there's a vibe of him where I think all the reports that we've seen of is Maguire, he wants to stay at Manchester United, fight for his spot. But I think Ten Hag saying, you're not captain anymore, lad. 
we we do want to sell you that yeah. we've got we've got in the pecking order like you said there are left backs and full backs that are in it that are um higher up in the pecking yeah. order he's not been he's not been terrible for manchester united but he's definitely not been as good as we thought he would be he, and and for this point now in his career i think he just needs game time he needs to be playing week in week out he needs that pressure off of him completely because he's not handled it well when he's at Manchester United. When he plays for England, he seems to be okay, but when he puts that red shirt on, there's a different type of pressure that he just seems to yeah. not be able to, to hack. Yeah, I think I think with England, he's got a great partnership with John Stones as yeah. well. I think they, those two have just always worked really well together. But I agree. Like I think um, I think the time is up for him at United. I think he has an opportunity to revive his reputation yeah, at another club. Like he's still yeah. a very good Premier League level centre back, and and if anything, actually, he got worse under Ten Hag than he had been in the previous season when he was getting you know all sorts of abuse. Um, and um, yeah, it, it feels like it's it, it's time for him to go. Um, Can I go just on. on? He is the most abused footballer on social media. He I was at least last season. Last yeah. season, we did a video on it. And I think, it is, yeah. It's not easy. Like, you've got to feel sorry for the guy. No, for sure. sure. Actually, his United career has been pretty, pretty good in most yeah. parts. I think it's not his fault he cost that much money, and he's just getting picked on relentlessly. Yeah. I think, and it is just, and it's just this must just be another blow for him. So I do hope he's okay in all honesty, yeah. because this it can't be easy going through this hmm. all the time. And I agree with you. I think he should even move abroad, or he should just go to somewhere where he can. Be the main guy. Yeah, yeah. feel loved. And I think I heard I heard reports about Newcastle potentially being in for him Mm. or West Ham. Like those, even 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 some rumours about Chelsea as well. Yeah, saw some rumours about Chelsea. I don't think the age and you know the wages make sense. I also think do do Chelsea need another centre back at this point? No, we we don't. I think he just needs to go. He just needs to go somewhere where he can defend first, where it's just literally because at Leicester they were a bit under the under pressure under the cost like he was just ec- excellent at just heading the ball away keeping it simple simple yeah. football is where he I think, really uh, yeah, he, he needs to play in a, in a team that doesn't employ a high line essentially yeah he? that's that, the main that's thing what, that's, that's what that's exposes him and, and, yeah. and United are a team like that now under Solskjaer great because they defended deep he could also bring the ball out from the back he needs yeah he needs to be starting left centre back in a team that you know needs someone who can play out from the back but you know don't need someone to uh, yeah, be, be playing a particularly high line, mm. or at least like leading that high line. Um, so yeah, but you're right. Like I think, yeah, I mean, especially after the Deli Ali interview last week, just mm. hits home. You know, uh, you know how much um, how much pressure you know footballers it's are under lot, in man. the modern world. Um, so yeah, go and check that out that interview if, if you haven't already. Um, very very um, powerful. Um, okay, Fabinho, Oof. Liverpool, Ality had. 40 million uh, on the table. Take it, man. Did yeah. you take it? Yeah, that's, they paid, I think, 39 mil in 2018 when they got him from Monaco. Had a few years. He's won everything at the club. I think right now, obviously, they were setting up their... their t- well, it, what, the way it looked in terms of what they were doing in the tracks window, it, it seemed like they were setting up for him to still be that six and to have like more active eights yeah. around him. But now... I think if you're getting that money for him and you want to almost kick on and he's not getting to the latter years of his career, he's still he's still fairly young. I, if think, we're talking, I think he's 30 now. Yeah, he, he, or maybe he's, he's 29. He's still fairly young, so yeah. it, it, it might hit them a little bit. But if you're going to get that money, they've been linked with Lavia, mm. they've been linked with um, a few other midfielders as well. The only thing for Liverpool is now that lack of experience mm. that they're going to have if he does leave. Because if Henderson leaves, if Fabinho leaves... They've already lost um, Ox and Keita and Milner, oh, yeah. for example. So they're so going to have leadership a very thing is gone. yeah. They're going to have a very young midfield. But at the same time, a manager like Klopp, if he believes in the the, the players, I don't think that's the worst situation for them. Mm. So it, it's going to be interesting. But I think Liverpool are, are most likely going to take it, and they, they should. It, yeah. it, it does feel like you know if an offer comes in like that, Liverpool do tend to tend to take it. What do you, what do you think, Henry? Would you would you take it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's. As, as Sam alluded to, essentially it makes that transfer, oh, they've just been paying his wages the last few years. Yeah. And they, they've now got money to reinvest in another midfielder, but I completely agree. Luckily, they've still got tons of experience at centre-half. Alisson's obviously a mm. huge figure there. And then even up front, Salah and you know players like Jota have been, the, been there a while now, it feels like. Mm. this. So they've got experience in the rest of the side, but they do need... I think, obviously, it's a nice idea signing Lavia as well, but this is a 19-year-old that got relegated with yeah. Southampton last year after mm. one year of Premier League experience. I do think they need to try and find someone who's done it a bit more. Like, if rumours of Joshua Kimmich are true, 
something like that. I think that's really. Or, I mean, I, I, do you think like he could really go as well? Because I mean, it's like uh, he, he, he's a Bayern man, but like the opportunity to play under you know one of the greatest German managers of all time. You know, Kimmich is you know he's 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 not old, but like you know, the, those kind of opportunities no, only come around a few times in your career. Even like Goretzka figure. I mean, just they need to get someone w- with a status, an age, and experience at the very top level through the door. And Liverpool's always going to be an attractive option yeah. to players across Europe. And I even I, I do think that players in like at Bayern Munich would take this. I mean, it's technically a step down at this point going to the Europa League to play at Liverpool. Like you said, Jurgen Klopp is a huge draw, and I don't think he's yeah. going anywhere just yet I think I think they've got a few more years of him potentially at Liverpool so so yeah I, I just take the money for Fabinho maybe take the money for Jordan Henderson which is a different conversation entirely um, you know I, I did a thing about I did a tweet about him being whether or not the money he's earning is like life changing it's the most responded to tweet I've ever had really? like, it's, it's crazy like the amount of debate and people talking Wait, about so it people yeah. think that it's not life changing because What's, he's already a footballer right? yeah yeah essentially it's like what what is generational wealth and stuff like that it was kind yeah. of nuts actually but Sorry, story aside, fine, it's, yeah. it's just it, it's it's Liverpool need to be slightly careful here because you don't want to be going into the next season. We've got Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott as well, but these are these are young guys. They don't want to be going into next season basically relying on Alcantara as their only major experience in that midfield when he's hardly even played last season. And he's not really a proper six as well. I mean, he can play as a six, Thiago, but yeah, injury problems um, isn't necessarily a specialist in that area. Um, yeah. I think it's a risk. I, I do think it's a risk. Um, I think, yeah, Liverpool, you know, will never get as good an offer as that for Fabinho. Right, exactly. but, but, but equally, Liverpool need to finish in the Champions League places next year. It's yeah. imperative that they do. And I think, you know, Fabinho, yeah, alongside McAllister and Soboslai, uh, could, could have a bit of a revival next year if he were to stay. I think it's a risk. I was speaking to yeah, speaking to a Liverpool supporting friend yesterday. Not convinced by Lavia as a kind of really. Yeah. I think as a like for like. I think yeah. Henry, I think Henry's right. Like I think he has amazing potential, but getting a 19-year-old into you know and expecting him to adapt quickly to um, you know a ball dominant you know European chasing side is you know it is a big ask. It is a big ask. He 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 might be up up to the job, but it's still. I think it would still be a risk, he, he at was, least in the short term, right? Like, I think you know, Liverpool are still building. I mean, Liverpool are building the, the, the side for the successor to Klopp. But you have to you have to kind of have those two priorities, don't you? You have to have the long-term priorities, the short-term priorities. And having, having already gutted that midfield, I do feel like losing the DM might be one transition too far at this I moment agree. in time I think I think they should just go for it though if it like I hear what you're saying and I, I completely agree but I think if you're in a in a transitional period for your midfield like Henry said they've got experience in defence in goal um, up top if you've now got rid of five midfielders let's say and that you see two great offers coming in for the other midfielders that didn't necessarily have great seasons last year obviously you still want to kick on with them if the right offer comes in and you know the players are available on, on the market because of those offers you'll be able to get them and mm. say okay you'll definitely be starting with a manager like Klopp who you're saying they're probably preparing for life after him it's not the worst case scenario to have to have those youngsters you know learn life at Liverpool under Klopp if that means for them to you know be battling let's say for that top four spot because I don't think it's guaranteed either way mm. but if you're going to come into a system I think it'll be fine it'll be fine to, to come into Klopp's system yeah yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And I mean, it, it, it would be fun as well. Like if, if Liverpool have a completely new midfield next year, mm. um, it'll be interesting to see whether Soboslai is put in a, in a, te- a proper 10 role, whether he's going to be floating around a little bit more. That forward line is super stacked now. Um, I think, I, think it, I guess the worry with Liverpool is what part of the team is going to be um, the thing that kind of is a constant and, and, and kind of defines their season because their, their, their forward line was, was great last year mm. um, but it was their midfield that let them down so like this fixing of the midfield they do need to get it right I think Soboslai and McAllister both excellent signings spoke about them on Sunday Vibes um, but anyway I'm just going to be making the same point that I made before so let's move <laughs> on to, um, to uh, some European stuff yes Milan yeah um, Reinders um, from Alkmaar 20 million euro fee um, have you watched much of this guy uh, I thought I'll, I'll have it straight <laughs> <laughs> I put you right on the spot here Henry I've watched all of him no, he's, uh, <laughs> no, he's super talented uh, from what I've seen and Alkmaar 
Good do numbers you, from midfield as well. Three really, goals, seven assists. Absolutely. Young. I really like these signings. These like 20 million euro signings that mm. AC Milan are making. Smart. Because in this, in this crazy business we call, you know, the transfer window, <laughs> <laughs> the we call show, no, it's, uh, it's nice to see some like reasonable <laughs> players going for reasonable fees. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? It's yeah. just... It's just it's a bit more refreshing. It's really smart. Like Alkmaar do have pedigree producing a lot of good talent over the years. And Coop Miners, for example, I think that he went from there to Atalanta. Yeah. He's, he's, been a he's being linked to Liverpool now, Coop Miners, actually. I wouldn't be surprised. Been, it's been your replacement. He's got some serious pedigree uh, him as well. But yeah, th- this, this is cool. I, I, I like what Milan are doing with this midfield. And it kind of backs up with the point we were saying about the money for Tonali. They, yeah. They've taken a huge wedge for him and great player, don't get me wrong. Made a big profit as well. Is expendable, and then they get uh, getting this uh, Rinders through the door. They've already got Loftus Cheek, who I think could probably thrive mm. out there. They've got Pulisic for I think a very reasonable fee, twenty million euros. Um, it sounds like they're going for the Chukwueze as well at, at right wing, and also it sounds like they're going for Yunus Musa, yeah. another really useful central midfielder um, playing uh, playing at Valencia. We saw it at the World Cup for the USA. He was excellent in the midfield. I think I think the American owners are quite liking the American push. Mm. It, it seems to be all working into some kind of wider w- w- wider plan for AC Milan in terms yeah. of growing their well, global If they get profile. into a bidding war with Inter over Balogun, that could be, yeah, that could get pretty tasty, yeah, couldn't a, it? Another one too. And yeah, Yunus Musa, um, really, I think the sixth most youth player at Valencia last year. Difficult time for Valencia. Mm. More of like a defensive guy in terms of creative output, but that's did play, did play on the right wing a bit as well. Started out on the right Absolutely. wing at Valencia as well. Yeah, that's um, where so he's, that's where he came where he through. Of, yeah, that's where he kind of started. But I think he's always been a specialist central midfielder. But then I, I was uh, kind of looking up at his season last year. I think he played four times on the right wing towards the end of the campaign. So he is. I guess that's. I guess that's what's good. Yeah. Is he's quite versatile, isn't he? A bit of a utility Absolutely. man. Absolutely. But I mean, the, the biggest criticism we had of Milan is sort of the lack of depth they had towards the end yeah. of last season. You're now looking at that midfield. They've already got Krunic. In yep. there, what Benacer too? I think Adley could get some minutes this season. So. Charles de Ketelara, we're not sure what's going to happen to him, but he is there. And then they've they, they, uh, Rinders, they're getting through the door. Musa, and then Loftus Cheek. There's suddenly a lot of options in that midfield, and Pioli can have a bit of fun with it. Fratesi, I think he's probably going to go to Inter Milan. I think he's in all think honesty. Might have done, isn't it? But yeah, yeah, it's 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 very exciting what Milan are, are doing with this side, and they are going to be a bit stacked. Going yeah. forward, and that's nice to see because this is actually what Maldini wanted. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that they'd have put some transfer targets together. They've been working on some of these for a while. Um, obviously, that didn't work out with Maldini, but credit credit to the, the owners. They're, they're making moves. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And they, they've got that kind of analytical approach, don't they? They you go to lose, they kind of transformed with that. Um, my one worry would be, yeah, I, I think they've, they've, you know, they're investing smartly, but. It does feel like Benacer is the only proper DM there. They've got a lot of midfielders who can kind of do a lot of things, um, but net maybe you know at DM they're not so stacked. Maybe maybe Moose is going to be you know playing a bit more of a DM Krunic role. Krunic can kind of do Krunic that can kind of do it as well. Yeah, I mean he was great against Napoli, wasn't he in that in that quarter final? Um, let's move on to um, Javi Simons because he's. Back at PSG, big baller. So, uh, supposedly a loan to RB Leipzig, six million euros, wasn't it? They they got him back in on. Um, Sam, are you excited to see uh, Xavi Simons next season? Do you think? Yeah. Do you think? Do you think he does have a future at PSG? I don't know, man. I don't know. I think I I, I saw reports about if Neymar and Mbappe both stay, then he's definitely going to go out on loan. Yeah. I think it's smart for them to to activate that clause and and yeah. just get him just back kind of lock, because yeah, back we saw what he done um last season but for his career i think it he just needs to continue playing football and be guaranteed minutes and he's already proven that he's the type of player that once he's guaranteed minutes he can score goals he can get assists and he's like it's it's been beautiful to see him growing in front of our eyes from that like young player that had all the expectation of him growing on to to be one of the greatest players and then almost that period of doubt of whether he's going to be that player um i'm not necessarily sure whether he will do it now at psg they've made so many signings already if they keep the players that they have it, it, there it, is it, a messy it, shaped hole there though there is there is and <sighs> not saying that javi simmons is you know but it needs be, to be messy but like i mean he's he plays in a similar area to him he yeah. is a, he he makes things happen on the pitch like he was pr- probably the best player in the era of last term wasn't yeah. he at psv like I think I think it I think it's smart. I think it's smart from PSG to, to activate it. I'm just hoping that they they see the quality he has and, and utilizes him utilize him properly because he's a quality quality player. Yeah. What do you reckon? I, I think this is really sm- six million pound buyback clause. Yeah. It's an absolute no brainer. Yeah. I mean, 
19 goals, 8 assists in the Eredivisie last year. Really exciting at PSG in the academy before that. So they're signing someone that knows the club mm. as well. And I think it's very smart of the player to push for a move to RB Leipzig as well. Another attack-minded club to kick his career on. And actually, Leipzig, they, I would say they're going for the Bundesliga next year. The signings that they're making, make a, they're, they're really pushing for some big additions. I mean, mm. they've got Baumgartner in central attacking midfields. Uh, they've already got Andre Silva and Timo Werner in that forward line. They've added, um, which George is laughing behind the camera. I'm not quite sure why. So, um, <laughs> John Babb in the building. John Babb has <laughs> a what a legend. Oh, right, yeah. The ghost of Babb is haunting Monday vibes. So, <laughs> let's get back to business. Um, yeah, and, th and then they've just also brought in, what, Carvalho in the forward line too on loan from Liverpool and now they've got Lois Appender. They've just broken their yep. transfer record, spent 43 million euros, 21 goals last season for Lons. That's a lot, man. Really, really fun striker. They've got Benjamin Sheshko as well coming in from Red Bull Salzburg, who's also a super highly rated talent. They've got some options in that mm. forward line next year. I'm not sure Andre Silva has much of a future in that side in all honesty, but it's, yeah. I really like what they're doing. They've also pinched another PSG youngster, um, the centre half. Yes. Whose, whose name is on the script? Oh, is it? Okay, <laughs> yeah, cool. Let, 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 let me, let me re get that up. Oh, yeah, that's it. Uh, oh, yeah, El Shaddai... Oh, El Shaddai uh, Bichiabu. Sorry, I absolutely butchered that. <laughs> Should we do that <laughs> again? Shall yeah, I maybe that's... Yeah, <laughs> They've also pinched another youngster from PSG, Bichiabu, a centre-half. I yep. think made 14 appearances last year, 18 years old. Not really the kind of guy that PSG want to be losing. Mm. Again, it's another sign of them it's losing PSG, isn't it? young talent. But yeah, hey... They'll probably get probably getting back for multi millions at some points. So yeah, Maybe. I really like what Leipzig are doing. Getting Xavi Simons through the door to add to that attack is, is just very it's really cool. So yeah, yeah. I mean uh, they are trying to replace Soboslai and Nkunku, aren't they? They will potentially have to replace Kvardiol as well if City take them off the hands. I mean they're getting back, they've got great prices for all of them. I mean actually Chelsea probably got a bit of a steal on Nkunku, um, but a great price they got for Soboslai. They will get probably a, a brilliant price for Guardiola if, if he does go so they they are big shoes to fill there but you're right like they they they're stacking that forward line i think yeah Carvalho was looked brilliant mm. in those early months at Liverpool didn't he um i think also yeah you're right uh, Andre Silva not so sure i think v Werner and Dependa are a lot more similar in their kind of profiles in terms of playing in transitional systems and getting in behind and whatnot uh, yeah Appenda could could explode at Leipzig um, but yeah I mean they, they, they were probably good enough to challenge for the title last year and just had a terrible first yeah, kind of six weeks didn't they so um, you know if, if they can gel those new signings with a Panda Bangs then um, yeah they'll absolutely be in with a shout I reckon I do agree um, should we move on to some other transfer business or do, or do you want to say anything more about just, Javi Simons or just quickly I think I think Bournemouth have signing a left back from Alec Mar as well while we're here on Alec yeah. Mar yeah um, he's Kerkesh. 19 years old he was meant to be going to Lazio and they've kind of come in and torpedoed that deal and got him themselves which is another sign of the Premier League spending power because if a Champions League club like Lazio who are desperately trying to recruit this year having not much luck mm. are getting beaten to the punch by Bournemouth then it's, it's slightly worrying but this guy played tons of minutes at left back last year very exciting tons of crosses I think another fun piece of business by Bournemouth um, I really do they've what Roman Favre I think they've signed as well yeah. from Lyon um, so yeah they're, they're going for some big names with, with, with pedigree Kirk is obviously a bit more of a um, talent to be grown but I, I, I really, I'm really enjoying what who's the American film star who owns Bournemouth Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. Uh, Jordan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's so, on, no, I mean, he's a, he's a he shareholder. No he's, 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 he's on who scored. He's, he's, on, <laughs> he's on FB ref. Calling up the boys and getting some players in. I'm, te I'm telling you. But yeah, no, sorry. I just thought I'd mention that quickly while we had Alcom on the subject. Yeah, no, for sure. Fun, I mean, Bournemouth, yeah, Bournemouth, I mean, since January, Bournemouth have, have made great. And they and they really have raided Ligue 1 as well. Obviously, yeah. they've got the links with with, uh, with Lons, isn't it? Uh, is it Lorient? Oh, Lorient. Lorient, sorry. They've got the links with Lorient. Although it wasn't enough for them to get uh, Enzo Lefay obviously at Rennes yeah, amazing signing thing. for Rennes another amazing signing at that club could be an outside shout in the uh, you know kind of top two next year maybe Ooh. maybe I think you heard it first um, I do yeah Rennes at Rennes do you know uh, do you have a soft spot for them um, yeah let's let's wrap up with some other business Dusan Tadic, uh, Tadic to Fenerbahce also supposedly talks with Zaha going to Fenerbahce what do you, what do you guys make of this you think is Fenerbahce where Zaha wants to go after Palace like after all that time? I don't think so, but I, I don't know if he's running out of options or whether, whether he's 
he's in a place where he's demanding too much. I saw links with Saudi. I don't think he wants to go there mm. um, yet. I, I, I can't remember the, the team that I saw in, in Syria. Lazio. 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 Um, I, it's a really tough spot for him. It's like you can either stay in the Premier League, stay at Crystal Palace and um, just live life there as a, a Palace legend or you can go and kick on and like make your name somewhere else. But I think it's 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 a tough position to be in because you can tell he 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 longs for like a new journey uh, mm. opportunity to win trophies but also the wages that he might be asking for might be too much for the teams that we're we're talking about like AC Inter you know teams that he's been linked with in the past as well I think Fenerbahce would definitely be the wrong move for him but at the same time they've got a loose fan base they're definitely going to be in the title conversation it's it's that might be something for him, but I'll be in, I'll be I'll be shocked if if that does happen, if that move does go through. I mean, Henry, you're a, you're a real kind of Turkish football aficionado. Would you would you be excited to see that move? Would you? I mean, do you think it's right for Zaha as well? Like, uh, well, if the money's if the money's good, I'm trying to think if they've even got Champions League football next year. I don't think they do. I think then George and I were looking at the Conference League and seeing the teams that are in it last. Yeah. <laughs> some fun 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 guys in that that competition as always. But yeah, if the money's good, I will say it is. It looks like Fenerbahce have looked at what Galatasaray are doing and thought we need to get some big names through the mm. door too because Dusan Tadic is a great signing. That mm. is a really yeah. great signing. His numbers are just mental year in, year He'll out. He'll do well there as well. For Ajax. And yeah, I mean, I think Galatasaray confirms uh, the Akardi deal and it looks like they've got Angelino as well, who was a really... Great you know, signing. A Fantastic great, for Hoffenheim last yeah, year. Yeah, abs- absolutely. So yeah, they've got Angelino as well. They're building a very, very, very exciting side a maverick side as it were um, I even saw Doogie tweet about them and saying how much he was oh. enjoying it so that's getting in on your surf Doogie there yeah. 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 seal of approval for Gala. so yeah <laughs> but Fenerbahce reacting with Zaha potentially well, sorry Tadic potentially Zaha and also getting Dzeko through the door it's fun game on game mm-hmm. on at the top of the Super yeah. League absolutely absolutely um, a few other ones to run through Inter signing Juan Cuadrado I quite like this deal personally one year deal it's, it's fine <laughs> you know what I mean he's, a, he's a, a, still a very productive Serie A yeah. Wing back, he's yeah. Right back, he's he's he, you know what he's lasted a lot longer than I thought. He's yeah. as in maintained his level for a lot longer. The Serie A was made for him. He's often held up that side, but yeah, mm. I mean it's an interesting. Move. It's classic Serie A kind of signing. That yeah, yeah. If, if, uh, in some ways it, it feels like the sort of thing where Inter might have the last laugh of that type, the big title race in, in Serie A next yeah. season, all to play for with Napoli, you know, potentially dropping off. Roma's um, going to be there. It's just great depth, isn't it? Because Denzel Dumfries has has had a pretty solid time there as mm. well, hasn't he? Federica De Marco, excellent season last season on the left, um, but yeah. Not, not you know, not fireworks, is it? Um, Mark Rocker gone on loan to Betis. Yeah. Hector Bayer in back there as well. Love that, love that. Mark Rocker, we, I think he didn't look as good as he is at Leeds last year. In all honesty, and I think he'll be a lot happier back at Betis. Was he at Betis once upon a time? Uh, I'm not sure. He was at Espanol, Espanol before Espanol. he went to um, right. before he went to. Bayern. And yeah, Bayer in. Good to see him go back there. Looks so epic mm. in that kit when he first already back. back in the old school kit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> wicked <laughs> fashionista <laughs> um, with the uh, yeah the moustache and mullet still in in full flow. Um, finally, Aaron Ramsey returning to Cardiff. That was kind of end of last week, wasn't it? Um, it's nice, quite nice. Yeah, I, I I I like that for him. You know, one of those moves that he's probably gonna retire there. Yeah. Um, and I think his son signed as yeah, well. That's true. And yeah. they both got the same number. That those type of Cute. signers, you know, it's nice. It's like oh, lovely. Uh, awesome. Know what I mean? I, that is a big move. Cardiff have not been in a great state the last few years. They've mm. been languishing at the bottom of the championship, struggling. Ramsey could have easily have got a lot of money to go somewhere. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Else, em- Emirati kind of style league. I think it's a really nice story that he's chosen to go back to Cardiff, and I think he's going to be very. I think he's, he's going to be a great player in the championship. He's, he, I know it, his numbers at Nice weren't fantastic last season, but he still played quite a lot of minutes and will be. The profile that he'll bring to that club at this point in time, it, it's a really lovely story. And there was talk about Gareth Bale at one point going back, that didn't really materialise mm. at all, did it? To get Ramsey through the door, leader in midfield, playing in the national team stadium week in, week out. Yeah, great move. What a nice, what a yeah. nice wholesome. I love Ramsey, man. I love yeah. him. I, I hope he does well. I hope he does well, to be fair. Yeah, not a nice wholesome way to end the episode, I think. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, very quickly, uh, Declan Rice to Arsenal. How happy are you that that's finally oh. done? I hate these transfers where it's like announced weeks ago and yeah, then we're yeah. just waiting for it and it's just relentless updates which say absolutely nothing <laughs> the same thing just different words it's, yeah. it's a move that just took it took so long it's a big big move for Arsenal I think 
what, what I've seen in recent years is that when uh, uh, a move like that happens, like rival fans always try to diminish the type mm. of signing it is. Oh, he's not that good. Oh, is he going to be better than Declan yeah. Rice? Is lots, of good, lots of Chelsea fans saying that about Mount right now. Yeah, he, but, sorry. It, it happens, and <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not. Yeah, of it, it, it happens when when you know big players go from like you know like a West Ham type team to mm. like an Arsenal or to to United or Chelsea. Just respect that he's a quality player and he's going to transform. I think their there's team. also this thing, right, where, where English players, you know, for better or worse, you know, they do, you know, they have always been overhyped by mm. the English press, mm. etc., by pundits, you know, um, and there's, you know, probably bias involved in that. I'm sure we're, we're, we're guilty of, of overhyping English players a little bit, especially when they're kind of young stars. Uh, but then there's this flip side of that whereby I think there's this narrative whereby. You know, everyone's, just, everyone's just like, yeah, like, oh, well, he's an English midfielder. That means he's overrated. Yeah. He's not actually that good. Yeah. You know, that, like, that, that conversation happened with Mount Tons. It's happened with Rice alone. Um, and you're right, yeah, coming from a kind of more mid-table side as well. Um, it's a crazy, it's yeah. a lot of money. It it's is a lot. lot of money for but a defensive-minded midfielder. I'm sorry. But it, it's, it, it makes sense, though. Like, do you think it, it's a game-changer, though? Do you think it, 100%. Do you think it, do you think it, put, you think it puts Arsenal I don't in know, a better I stead I, to challenge City 100, next season? 100%. If you look at any of the players outside of the top six clubs, Declan Rice is top three. So if you're going to be able to get a player like that in the current market and understand that all of these players are going to be overpriced, like, let's talk about Chelsea. They signed Enzo because of what he could potentially be mm. after seeing him for six months. We've seen Declan Rice perform for West Ham for like three or four years, being captain, winning a European trophy. Yeah, this is boy Pay the club. money. Pay the money. This is boyhood club. No, it's a lot easier to be a superstar when you are the main man completely. And at Arsenal, like the expectations. Do you don't are... think he's going to be the main man at Arsenal? Like he's the main man no, at Arsenal. He's going right? to be one of the main no. men, 100%. Of course Saka, he will Saka be. is the main man. Odegaard is the main man. And he's going to be in Even that conversation. Jesus. Jesus is a more. But he's yeah. going to be in that. How many main men can Arsenal have? <laughs> <laughs> Too many main men. <laughs> <laughs> no, but City have how many main men? Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> what do you, you think of there? Too, Too many, many men. I think let's wrap it up. It is, it, is, it is a good signing. It's fun. I like I like the video of him and um, Bruno Fernandes training together. Oh. Um, out in Portugal mm. somewhere, other Portuguese internationals. And we saw Rashford and Foden training together. There was that funny lineup of like Carl Walker with a load of really random European players. Yeah, I think yeah, Chalhanoglu yeah. was in there. A lot of these coaches have got good like um, contact. Just makes you realise like they're all they're all just friends. Like, they're all just, mates. They're all just all, chilling out. It's all just one all happy family. Rivalry. It's, it's not really a happy family. Too many. Uh, be, interested <laughs> to, be interested to see what happens with Carl Walker and Bayern Munich actually, yeah, by the way. I'd, I'd really like him to join. Yeah, he should go there. Maybe, he's just won everything at City, hasn't he? he there's no reason for him to stick around. Go and have go and see out your career at Bayern True. great club he'll, he'll suit them really well uh, but I think yeah let, let's wrap up there because I think this is going to descend into mayhem um, otherwise he's already started <laughs> jumping on ground bro. I, don't know, I don't know what's happening <laughs> it's, it's happening. the sign on my face you know it's really so it's fine with, you know. you're just basking in the glory of Alcaraz aren't you? Still, <laughs> still on that high um, uh, but yeah thanks for watching Monday Vibes hope you enjoyed it with the alternative cast maybe Come we'll on. try and you know make this a more regular thing Too right. Doogie Joe, Zach, we're coming for you. Um, <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode, of course, leave us a like. Let us know your thoughts down below on all this transfer stuff, Lukaku, Xavi Simons, etc. Um, and we will catch you later in the week. Team talk on Wednesday. And there is actually, speaking of um, Enzo Fernandez, there is a great debate on Enzo Fernandez well, on Team Talk. So, um, yeah, go and check that out once it's out. See you later.